What's going on, everybody? This is Corinthian Neighbors, and this is LBTV on the Lindenwood University campus tonight. We have a great matchup today against Lindenwood Lynx and the Park University Pirates today. We just had the, uh, the Lady Lynx play, and they uh, had a great game. I hope we have an even better game with the men's team. And we're going to have some great competition tonight, all right? So uh, we're going to let the announcers announce everybody and have the national anthem, and then we'll be right back with LBTV, all right? Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second game of tonight's doubleheader between the Park University Pirates and your Lynx of Linwood Belleville. And now let's get to the starting lineups. First, for the visiting Pirates, Park University. Starting at guard, a six-foot junior from Harlem, New York. Number three, Rodrigue Marthon. Starting at guard, a six-six junior from Rochester, New York. Number four, Corey Reeves. Starting at four, a 6'6 senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Number 21, Blue Johnson. Starting at four, a 6'6 junior from Detroit, Michigan. Number 22, Ernest Miles III. And starting at center, a 6'7 senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Number 30, Alan Hyatt. And the Pirates are coached by Jason Klein. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for your starting lineup for your Lynx of Linwood Belleville. Starting at guard, a 6'2 junior from Memphis, Tennessee, number two, CJ Reader. Starting at guard, a six-foot freshman from Alton, Illinois, number five, Reagan Snyder. Starting at forward, a 6'3 sophomore from Oakville, Illinois. 12, Brendan Gilman. <laughs> Starting at forward, a 6'5 graduate student from Reno, Nevada. Number 13, Matt Brayden. <laughs> and starting at guard, a 6'3 freshman from Barcelona, Spain. Right, that was the start and lineups for both teams. I see a lot of energy is in this building. There's a lot of energy on this court. We're gonna have a great game. All right, that's all I gotta say. We're gonna have a great game today. It's the tip off. 
number 21, number 13. Play from Barcelona. And we're off. Great draw for number 21. And already the line, the, the, the links are chanting defense. They want the same defensive efforts that the Little Leagues gave last game against the same team. They want the same defense. Now, are they able to do it? Let's hope they can. If not, well, let's make some adjustments. Great jump shot, air ball, and that's go right out of bounds. Gilman inbounds pass. Great defense already. This is some great defense from Park. A lot of height as well, but that's not to be surprised about. This is a men's college, so. Nice floater from number two over the big man. Defense getting chance. They really want to win today. Fantastic draw to the basket, but came up short. Great handle from number five. He is wide open. Should have shot the ball, but maybe not confident enough with his shot. Great tips. Great. Oh, oops. It tipped out and got right back. Stolen again. And that is a fantastic charge attempt. And that ball was returned to the Pirates, I believe. Yes, it will. Both the, both the teams are already sweating, already. This, this game is <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Now, uh, with the men's team, it's a little bit different than the women's team regarding the time. We have four 10-minute quarters with the women's team, but in the men's team, we're gonna have two 20-minute uh, quarters, so basically a half, just like the NCAAs. So after 20 minutes are up, we're gonna have the half, and we're gonna have the fantastic. Fantastic charge attempt, which is successful. Yeah, at that, we're going to have the ceremony for the rugby team. And then we'll have one more half after that. Just to clear that up, if people didn't know about that rule. I love the athleticism and the handles, but he is double teaming. He is, oh, and better shot. And that is off. Great rebound from number 22. Boxing out. Number three is calling the, call, call the plays. And that is a Wow, it's going to be overturned. The Lynx are looking really good right now. The spirits are high against this team that is the underdog, actually. The Lynx uh, are coming to this game with uh, a record of 1-5. in five. Not the best record, but it is a record. And they are trying to tr triumph through this really, really Hard team to beat, which is six and one so far in the Pirates. Fantastic bounce pass through legs, open. And that is a great, and that is all the way off, sadly. Fast break, and that was almost a monstrous dunk, but he missed it, and a life was saved today, folks. A life was saved because the ball came out loose. So we're going to go to the line, see if they can get their first two points of the game. And 
And the first one is off. And let's see if the second one has any luck on it. And it is good. Score is two to one after two minutes, about three minutes to play. Great bounce passes. Great pass. Passes out. Better shot. Gilkin is wide open. Fantastic defense. They are shifting. The and this is going to be a, that's a block, a clean block at that. And that is, wonder what call it is. It's either a blocking or a charging foul. I'm pretty sure it was blocking. And there's a timeout. We're living with Lynx, I believe. All right, so we have an early timeout so far. Only three minutes to the, to the game. A lot of energy. It's a lot of energy tonight. Woo. My question is to all the folks out there listening, how long do you think they can keep up this fast, intensive pace? As we saw with the last game, the women team, Parks Edition, they show a certain burst of energy at the end of the game for that crazy finish. But now, they're, they're, they're going hard right off the back. And I think it's safe to say don't exhaust yourself before you get into the crunch time parts of the game. Number three is calling the plays. A lot of fast cuts. Number 21 is wide open, and that is a three. It is good. And they take the lead for the first time of tonight. Fantastic defense. Throwing a lot of lob passes. And the reason why they're doing that, folks, is because the height on the Parks team is very, very significantly different. And that is a lob for no human life right on the top of his head. And they could do nothing to stop that. But that did not stop the energy or the confidence of the Lillywood Link because they are still playing their heart out at this moment. We'll see what they're gonna come up with. Oh, fantastic pass from the point guard, and that's a scoop. And it is not good. It is not good whatsoever. Number twenty-one with the ball. Another a, a interception for number two. He got hit in the face there, but he's right back on it. He's, he's all right. And let's. And that is a great, smart, educated finish from Gilligan, the sophomore from Illinois. A lot of cuts, a lot of a lot of action here. Oh, call for a screen. Didn't doubled, didn't get doubled, and that is very poor IQ. It's two on two, and it is in with the acrobatic finish. Nothing was stopping him. Nothing at all. Fantastic finishes here. Fan another turnover for the ball. Oh, oh, turnover. Oh, not quite. And then here we go with the foul. I think number 13 got hit in the growing, but seems to be walking it off. Bad place to get hit at. But got some subs coming in. Number two is getting off the court for the park, the Pirates. And we have number one coming in for the Pirates. And number four is going off for the Pirates. So we have a few substitutions coming in. Number 13 came in. Number 13 is wide open, fakes it, goes into the hole, and one with the acrobatic finish, but no foul. I'm sorry to say, and one. A whole bunch of defenses 
crowded him at this moment. A lot of defense, a lot of intensity, a lot of it. The Lynch is looking a little lazy here. Not, not lazy, they're looking really tired. They're, their legs are getting tired already because they cannot keep up with these, these pirates. And that is a blocking foul. So we got a couple of substitutes coming in for the Lynx. As we see those legs getting tight out there, we're going to keep the legs fresh. Number four is coming in, and so is uh, number seven, I believe. Number 11, I'm sorry. Number 11, number four is coming in. Number 13, him the ball. And that is clean as day. Now the Pirates are starting to get an offensive rhythm right now. They have to somehow disrupt them of their offensive flow. They are doing a full court defense right at this point in the first quarter. And, and uh, tried to spin away with it and lost the ball. And now it is a turnover. Number five, wide open, hits the three, does not get it. And it is a turnover again. It is back and forth. Turnovers are going back and forth all night. Number two, it has the ball once again. Acrobatic finish and not finish. <laughs> Number 12, misses the ball. It is, it is very, very, very aggressive tonight. Number four helped up number one's player. Good sportsmanship. Great sportsmanship. Score is 6 to 11, but a lot of action happened for 6 to 11 to happen. Fantastic. Number two has been doing great things for his team. The 6 foot 2 junior. Great defense. They leave him wide open. He shoots. He misses. It is out on the Park University Pirates. Gilman is back in. Inbound pass. Number two. Pass the ball out. Trying to get past half court. It is really tough. And that is a interception. It's two on one. And that that was a clean finish. Would it not foul from the, the Lynx? Number two, right back at it with the handles, taking the ankles, right to it to the man. And then that is a three from downtown. Couldn't stop it whatsoever. Couldn't even stop it. Fantastic, going up with it and then does not get it, but gets the charging foul. So then the Lynx will recover the ball and make it in 9-13 with 11-47 in this half. The Lynx last year did not have a great outing. They were four for 26 of the year. So they're trying to have a different outcome this year. And they want to start a great winning streak with tonight's, and that was a, a monstrous block for number 13. With the man has hopped, and he has the fantastic charging foul once again, sacrificing his body every time he drives the ball. That is just great IQ from number 11. Great IQ. But what a beautiful finish, though, from number 13, from the Pirates. That's a beautiful finish. The finger roll. And the thing is, he's not that tall, folks. And to finish that close to the rim with ease is a gift. Number 13. Number 11, I'm sorry. It, it, the defense is super tough. Like, I mean, it is nitty-gritty. And then that is a great block. I saw that coming. So did everybody else. 
fantastic defense. This is a game, folks. If you're not watching this right now, I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what you're doing. The 6'7", number three, or 30, 6'4", number four. There we go. Fantastic effort, fantastic effort. Fantastic effort from both ends of the floor. And I will add, they are playing full court right into the hole. Do we see a, nope. A little more air into that ball, they would have went right in. Oh, pass two going to Ellie Oop. Trying for a second Ellie Oop today for, for tonight. And that is a fantastic form, but then it just missed the rim completely. With the no look pass and the foul was no good. He would go to the line for two. <sighs> Their last meeting against Park was 64 to 84 in favor of the Pirates. At Park. Of, this what did not happen here. Yeah, the, 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 the Lynx had 28 points in the paint. They had 22 points coming off the bench. So clearly, bench points for this team is going to be really crucial. They need everybody on the bench coming off the bench and scoring crucial points. No matter if it's one or two, any point that you get matters. This won't be a ball hog moment. This will be a team ball. And that's something that has to be stressed through the coaches and through the players who are on the court for the Lynx. Now for their field goal percentage last time they met, it was 42.9% was the field goal percentage. Now I don't know what they can do to get that percentage up for tonight's game, but hopefully they watch film from last year's game and see how to improve on that on better shot taking. And for Park, they they had 52 points in the paint. So heavily they like to score in the paint. They're not a really great shooting team. Or they don't like to exercise it. Instead, you know, they had more points off of turnovers than I do you would think. 17 points off of turnovers. So obviously their defense that we are seeing tonight, they also displayed last time we played them at Park. And they're shooting 55 cents from the field last time we saw them. Number 22 is at the line. Makes the first one. Push lead to 9-14. And the second one does not make the cut. Fantastic defense. From Park, there's so much coverage and a uh, tip in. Try to go back up with it, no recommended, but he does anyway, and he does not get it. Should have passed that to his man who was in the corner, freely open for the three ball. But the pressure was so much on him, it was, and that is a fantastic. That's a fantastic way to get the ball back in possession, catches the ball, throws it back to the team. To other teammate, out of bounds, your ball. Street ball rules. Street ball rules. So number 12, Gilkin from Illinois is getting off the bench. He's getting ready to get subbed in. And we have a foul. And number 12 is coming in for number 24. Huh, that's nice. 12, 24. Aaron Rodgers, Kobe, number, it's whatever. <laughs> uh, no, but. So, yeah, they're, they're making a lot of adjustments here. They're going to take it from the half. And then they're, the co and the coach gave him that look that you get to your kid when they're messing up. Hey, get it together. The coach gave it the give it together look because he is angry. And we're back in, inside pass, 
fake it, and it goes right out of bounds. And it goes right back to the Pirates for that possession. But I am amazed. This is the best defense I've seen in a long time in basketball, besides, you know, the NBA, of course. But this is some great defense playing by them. Chris, and that is a three ball, and it is off. Three on four. Step back. Doesn't pull it. Gilligan with the ball. He is moving side to side. Great screen, but does not use it efficiently. Number four, he drives. Can he score? And he doesn't score. He doesn't score, but great effort, though. It's two on one. And then that is, a, oh, a little frustration for number two for the Pirates. If everything's okay, frustration. This team feels as if they should come in here and they should be dominating the game thus far. But sadly, they're mistaken because the Lindenwood Lynx are putting up a fight at this moment. Only trailing by five. Shoots two. Makes the first one. Got some substitutions coming in. And he gets the ball back, but it is stolen for number two. Oh, that's fantastic. He reached too far and he paid the price. And that is a very contact. Oh, three ball. Doesn't pull it. Mid-range shot. Doesn't get it. Gets the rebound over the six foot seven defender. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of heart that number two is playing with tonight. He is the soul of the team right now because he is, he is sacrificing his body. He is passing the ball left and right. He is everywhere on the court, everywhere. And they need that kind of energy right now with some hurt players out as of right now. And that is a great three ball. If he hits it, doesn't get it. Number zero reaches up two tall defenders and gets the rebound. And then he scores, number 11 scores, a great two. And now the score is 11-14. Number 21, 6-7. And that is a great contact acrobatic shot. Three defenders are on number five. Number two is wide open down a court, but number three is, is mirroring him. It's a, it's a lot of defense. A lot of defense and, and very nice passes with this defense because they are kicking the air. They are slapping. They want the ball badly. They really, and then that is a fantastic way to get into the hole, but it does not pan out correctly. And then, no, no, no. And then it doesn't go. And that is a block. Oh, and that is a foul at the same time. That's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. And he goes to the line for two. Very unfortunate. Yeah, last year, this, this, this team was 20 and 11. 16 for six in the conference and 11 for six at home. Those are great numbers. And they were also ranked 20th in all of NAIA. So this is a ranked team. It's still a ranked team thus far. And they are doing fantastic. They're just doing fantastic. They're, as it, Organization, his team, coaches, they're just doing a great job. So as the Lynx with their 4-26 and 26 record, they are the underdog. So the frustration that, you know, the Pirates have of not dominating so far, it, it, it's frustrating for them. But the, uh, and the mistakes like that start happening. You got number 11, and then, and, uh, and that is a foul. And it's a foul, number 23. It's going to go to the line, and then we have a timeout called 
by the Lynx. Fantastic effort. It's just, just fantastic all around effort from both teams. If you're watching this, you can't be mad at any team or either team for losing or winning because they're both playing really hard. And if you were here to see the live action speed and muscle and power they're putting behind the ball and their movements, you would be surprised. I mean, everybody is just very intense in the game. Just, just, just focused, zeroed in. Now we have seven minutes left in this quarter. As the seven minutes are up, we will have the rugby ceremony ring give, give, up, give out. Just want to just throw that out there. We have all the rugby team here as of right now. They are all in their own section, and they are all ready to, they're all dressed nicely, and they're all handsome and clean and beautiful and all that good stuff. All right, we're going to get right back to this. Substitutions coming in. So number 23, she is two. And the refs are discussing something thus far. Or something. All right. All right. I think we're ready. Missed it, and the Lynx had the ball. They are trailing by 10. He's getting double teamed, and he is fouled. seems to me and probably others who are watching that double teaming and pressing is their main defensive point and they are using it well. Yeah, it's getting hard. They, they shrunk the floor. It's getting hard to get into the paint. Number two goes into the paint. He lobs it up, doesn't get it, and it shot clock violation, and that ball is going to be overturned to the Pirates. A lot of pick and rolls, a lot of passing, acrobatic shots, and that is in for number 13 for the Pirates right now. That is a beautiful shot, beautiful play. The Lynx were moving in slow motion, it looks like. A lot of frustration. Mid-range shot, clean, easy collect, nothing like, it, like, like another day on the beach, whatever you want to call it, whatever metaphor I, I can come up with. And oh, the great, great, oh, and that is he dove straight at number two. That's a great defensive effort from the Lynx to get the ball back. And he will get two shots, I believe. Or yes, he will. He will get two shots because uh, the, the other player dove into him when he was on the ground to get the ball. And that is a foul, some might think. The Lynx, 13. Pirates 24. He's hoping to get both these free throws to cut the deficit back down to single digits. That would greatly help their chances of coming back into this game. And 
That is false. And that, oh, and he tosses it up. He can't catch it. Throws it too high. Oh, behind the back. Is he going to do it? He's, oh, it is a travel, but they don't call it. And then he is fouled, and there's no points rewarded. That's nothing. A pair of turnovers from the Pirates in the Lynx. Now we're back to the Pirates, and we have a foul on the play. He shoots. And he makes it. They now lead by 12 points. I believe the largest margin of the night. The Lynx only led one time this, this drive, or this just half, I should say. And it was between two and one. A lot of defense. So much defense. And oh, oh, the defense! And then no effort to block or foul. And then, oh, the defense. That's ah, the de defense. Defense is the chant. They are chanting. Which is scary. This is dangerous. It's, it's, they can't. It, it, number two has a pair of steals. Seems like it's back to back. He, he chased down a steal. It, they just can't match the speed of this team. Wonder what adjustments coach might make. And that is a clean three from number five with the defender right in his face for the Lynx. It's now 16-27. They trail by 11 still with 4.45 left on the clock in this half. Well, and no, and that is the Pirates ball. Number 24 ran into, or 12 went from 24. What happens here? And it seems to me that Park has a lot of sh shorter point guards than traditionally. Oh, 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 double spin. And that is going back to the Lynx. He thought it bounced off the Lynx's hand, but it did not. It bounced off his stomach and rolled out into bounds, out of bounds. And then the Lynx will get the ball, and they, get, and they have a chance to cut it down to single digits. They have a chance. And that would be huge if they can cut it back down to nine points. Like I said, this defense right here is just, just too. And then right there, right there. Nothing. Just, and then nothing whatsoever. And that is a charging foul. Number six tried to number six it like he was LeBron and James. And they boo. And number four, I'm so sorry. Number four, not number six. Tried to posterize his opponent and it just didn't happen. Took the charge, got the charge, got the ball back, and now they have another chance to Cut the deficit once again. But the defense and the, and the coverage is just so fantastic. And there's a shot, and, and that is a foul. A push in the back. And they will get the ball back once again. They have opportunities after opportunities to get the ball. Or, or I might be wrong. Am I wrong? No, 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 no. no, no. Free throws for the Lynx. The crowd, are, the, the whole entire gym is booing because they don't like the call, apparently. Everything is going crazy. It, 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 it's, it's, it's madness. It's fugazi. Number 14 has two shots, or one shot, sorry. Makes the first one. Now he has a second one. Ten fouls so far, and he 
Seals, the second. And they are back down to nine points. Now, I'm not sure what the coach is going to tell them during this timeout, but I do suggest they try to move forward and get this lead down because it's still in reach. Fantastic game we have so far. This is only the first half. This is only the first half, guys. And this is going to be a fantastic rest of the game. If they keep the same intensity, same effort, same heart, the Leafs can climb back into this game and they can see on taking the lead, potentially. Now, coming to this game, there was a player to watch for the Park Pirates. <clears throat> Zach Rutland. He's a five foot seven senior, and he was, uh, or I think he graduated, I'm sorry. Or, and uh, he was a uh, all AMC third team, and then last year he was all AMC first team. So he was the player to watch, but he is not here, or do I see him on the roster? I'm going to double check to fact check that. I do not see him on here, but they do have other players on this roster from their, their uh, AMC championship run they had last year that I will I'll, I'll discuss later on. That fantastic hand, put the hand on the ball. Way to, oh, the shift in defense is, is, is being known now. Number 21, Blue Johnson, the six foot seven forward. And he tries to slay it in, and he does. Through all the contact and all the tall bodies, he lays it up anyway. Six foot seven, has no problem. He, he just walks right in and scores at will. It's a lot of no-look passes, a lot of chemistry that both these teams both have tonight. And that is beautiful. Number 11 with the clean three. And three did not get it. And it goes. He saves it. Number five has the ball. 14 fakes it. Goes in. Pass back out. Better shot. Two minutes left on the clock. Fast cutback, mid-range, misses it, gets the ball back. Number 11, pass number zero. Ankle burger, 3,024 for three, and it's not in. It's not in, not at all. Fast break. He doesn't get it. And he, and he gets a foul, and it is not an and one. This is a fantastic game that is being played tonight. You can't tell me the energy in this building is not electrifying like I'm the rock. It, it, it's, 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 whew, it's too much. Missed the first free throw, number 21. If you guys are watching right now, that is the rugby team walking down to the ceremony uh, uh, table, I, I presume, to get their rings. All players, current players and former players are here to receive their ring from the 2019 spring run. Championship run, I'm sorry. Number zero with the rebound. With a no-look pass, bounce pass. Tries to go in. Oh, number 11 does not get it. He airballs. Fast break. Number one, he gets full head of speed. Doesn't get it. Doesn't get it. Pass right back out. Sees he can, can score. Smart decision by number one to pass it back out. Once we five left on the clock, on the clock. Great defense, great defense, great defense from the Lynx, and he has a full head of steam, and he goes in, and he doesn't score. He doesn't score. Fast break, two on one, and he rolls right off the rim, and that is a foul for the Pirates. They go to the line to get two.
Great effort. Great effort. Fantastic effort from both sides. Makes the first one, pushes lead back up to nine points. If he makes his next one, he has re re put it back up to double digits, which is 10 points. Number 12 is coming in for number 11, the sharpshooter. Misses the second one. Still nine point deficit. Cuts the corner, cuts the corner. Does not, shies away. Three, three ball, it is in! The lead is cut down to six points. That's crazy, it's crazy. They have a chance to tie it up, potentially this quarter. And that is an acrobatic John Wall type of move in the paint. Just goes right in. Acrobatics, that takes a lot of core muscle. I'm sorry. A lot of power to hang in the air and score the basketball with the finish in your face. Oh, number 12 was right open, but it does not matter. Number 21, six foot six with the crossovers. Breaking ankles down the stretch. Number 12 has the ball. Not paying attention. It is three on two. Does it? Ah, oh, he gets the easy lay-in. And it is back up to 10 points. That is the first half, folks. We will be right back. Uh, if you're watching, watch the ceremony if you if you possibly can. This is LB TV, Spectrum 989. This is Corinthian Neighbors. This is Little Lynx Arena. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the National Championship Ring Ceremony for the 2019 Linwood Belleville Men's Rugby Sevens Team. The Lynx won the USA Rugby Division I AA National Championship last spring in Arizona, capping off a remarkable season that will be remembered forever and proved that with dedication and hard work, Dreams really can come true. Over the course of the season, the Lynx won 32 and two overall and won five of the seven tournaments they competed in. The worst performances of the year were a pair of second place finishes. The Lynx started off their season with a championship victory, the Iron City Sevens in Birmingham, Alabama on March 9th. The Lynx top squad finished the tournament with a five and record with 45 tries scored while only surrendering four. Two weeks later, the Lynx earned their second championship of the season when they brought home top honors in the Simpson Showdown. Compiling a 3-0 record on the day, the Lynx picked up victories over Northern Iowa and a pair of squads representing Iowa Central. The Lynx then ended March with a second place finish in the Heart of America Sevens. The Lynx advanced to the finals before falling to St. Bonaventure, who claimed the bowl final at the Penn Mutual Collegiate Championships. The Lynx went 4-1 over the weekend. April began with a second place finish at the Big Ten Sevens hosted by Michigan. 
compiling a 4-1 record on the weekend. The Lynx suffered a 14-12 loss to Davenport in the championship game, but this would only set the scene for future drama. The following weekend, the Lynx Ruggers returned home to host the Lynx Collegiate Sevens. While compiling a 4-0 record on the day, Lindenwood Belleville picked up victories against Wisconsin Whitewater, the Lynx Reserves, Iowa Central, and a 21-14 victory over eventual CRC Sevens and USA Rugby Division I champion Lindenwood St. Charles. Next up for the Lynx was yet another Big Ten Sevens tournament. This one hosted by Northwestern. The boys went 6-0 on the weekend and picked up a revenge win against Davenport before defeating Ohio State. After a month to prepare, the Lynx packed their bags and took off for the USA Rugby Collegiate Sevens National Championship in Tucson, Arizona. The Lynx opened pool play with a 26-10 victory against Iowa State before picking up a 47-5 victory over Sam Houston State. The Lynx closed out day one with a 26-10 victory over Western Michigan, who had ended the Lynx dreams of a 15th national championship back in November of last year. The next afternoon, the Lynx picked up where they left off with a 36-5 victory over Oregon State. In the semifinals, the Lynx faced off with St. Joseph University and earned a 15-7 victory. Then in the national championship game, a rematch with Western Michigan the Lynx completed their mission and brought home this beautiful championship trophy with a 19-5 victory over the Broncos. And now that we have recapped the season, let's meet these young men who have won us this national championship, and they will be receiving their rings from Athletic Director Ryan Kaiser and Assistant Athletic Director Bart Levy. We would like to begin with Head Coach Joe Lipper. From Pittsville, Wisconsin. Joe has coached the Wisconsin Rugby Club in Madison, Wisconsin to the runners up in 2012 and to a national championship in 2013. Next is assistant coach Lee Abbott from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Lee started for Life University National Championship team before joining us at Belleville a few years back. Next up is Jonathan Buto. Jonathan is a volunteer coach in the community who works practice several times a week as well as home matches. A native of New Zealand, Jonathan knows more about the game of rugby than anybody else. And now for the players. Our first player is Lucas Black, freshman prop and utility back from Burley, England. Lucas competed in four matches, scoring one try and two conversions at the national tournament. Next up is Ross Brockett, a sophomore prop from Barmel, Scotland. Ross played in four games, started one, and scored one try. Next up is Jacob Gilliam. Senior halfback from Lenexa, Kansas. Jacob scored three tries, started in five games, and played in all six, and he started in the national title game. Next is Quinn Gilligan from Medina, Minnesota, though he can't be with us tonight as a student assistant coach. Quinn played three years and coached this past year and was a huge part of the success of the team. Next up is Cameron Grouse, a junior hooker from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Cameron played in six, started in five, scored one try, and started in the championship match. Next up is Kyle Hopcraft, a junior utility back from James, Oklahoma. Kyle played five, started two, and scored two tries. Next up is Jake Jacobson, freshman center and wing from Bank, Scotland. Jake was a member of the Dream Team. He started all six and recorded seven tries. He kicked the penalty goal to ice the quarterfinal match and was also the team leader in tries in two of, th in two of three in the final. 
Next up is Ryan Koberstein, senior hooker from Plainfield, Illinois. Ryan battled back from injury late in the season to be an important part of the championship squad after competing throughout the entirety of the fall season. Next up is Tyler Mahler. Freshman prop from Little Rock, Arkansas. Tyler played in one match at Nationals and was a huge part of the training squad for Nationals day in and day out as a freshman. Next up is Carter Marlowe. Freshman halfback from Blackfoot, Idaho. As a freshman, Carter played in five, started in two games, and did whatever was asked at any time to help contribute to the positiveness of the team. Next up is Tanashe Mucena. A sophomore prop from Herrera, Zimbabwe. Tanashe started all six matches, was our 15th captain, and provided great physical presence during the fall and spring season. Next up, although he could not be with us here tonight, is Ice Cube, a sophomore utility back from Bolaweo, Zimbabwe. He came in injured, but he came back strong as ever to help contribute to the team's success towards the season's end. Next up is Darius Palmer. Senior wing from East St. Louis. Darius played in all six games. He started in five, including the national final, and he scored three tries. Next up is Alex Quinn, a senior prop from Lenexa, Kansas. Alex cannot be here tonight because he is trying out for Major League Rugby in New York City. During the national tournament, Alex played in six, started four, and recorded four tries. Next up is Nick Reba, a senior prop from Ole, Kansas. Nick played in three games, started in one, he also battled back from a shoulder injury on day one of the national tournament. He ended up starting in the quarterfinal and subbed in the final. And our last player is Colson Warner, a junior halfback from Chubbuck, Idaho. Colson was a part of the dream team. He also scored four tries. 16 conversions for a total of 36 points during the national tournament, and he was named the tournament's most valuable player. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as they receive the trophy, please give another round of applause for your Lynx of Little Belleville's 2019 National Champion Rugby. If you want to stay for a dollar half for a shot to win a swag bag, Salt will be coming back out to do a half court shot for a swag bag. Bring your dollars, people, bring your dollars.
And welcome back to LBTV 989 Spectrum. This is the Littlewood University Belleville game versus Park University and men's team. And we just got done with the Rugby Sevens team here at the Littlewood University campus. And it was a fantastic ceremony. The Sevens team defied all odds and won nationals in the spring of this 19. If you want to read it, read up about it, I suggest you do. It's a great feat to have. Now, we're going to get back to the game because this game, let's not forget that this game is, is really intense. And I hope we have the same intensity we did the first half, the second half. So let's, let's, have, a, let's have a ball, all right? Let's get it. Let's get started. All right, number 21 is inbound in the pass. Blue Johnson, six foot six, from Kansas. We have switched baskets once again. Let's see how this affects each team. And that is a straight on three, and that is right in. Number 13 is right on his man after the three. No time to celebrate there. Number 12 loses the ball. It is H. Not a travel with. That's a turnover. That's what I meant to say. Number three, pass number four. Same intensity, great block from number zero. And then an even better steal. <laughs> Acrobatic finish from the Pirates. And the score just took off in a matter of one minute. It was to a point where they actually had to score down to six points. And, oh, fantastic floater. Nice rolling. The gentle roll. Here we are coming to the court, number three. Number 21, six foot six. He's going to dish it out to number two, his power forward, and he's going to get fouled and go to the line. The Park University Pirates are coming off a very monstrous win. They played the Hasco Indian Nations University School, and it was an 82 to 51 win blowout. So they have high confidence coming into this game right now. Like I said, they're ranked 20th right now, and they have a record of 6 and 1. 1 and 1 in the conference, 2 and 0 at home. So. Yeah, they're 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 on a they're on a roll right now, and the Little Wayne University roster or not roster, they're ooh, it's very intensive. It's hard to get out the hole. Fantastic transition. Walks down the court, chanting defense. Leading by 13, he is fouled. He will go to the line for two. Lots of contact and lots of fouls going down tonight. That quick release from the free throw line in between two. And he makes both of them. 
The defense is still full court, and they are still playing. And he misses the pass, but then he no looks it to number zero, who missed the intended pass. Now he turned the ball over. It's a, it's a lot of, and number 21 with the handles, a Euro step, or the Jamal Crawford layup package, if people know Jamal Crawford is. Just created space into the lane, made a hole, and then didn't make the didn't make the you know the goal, but very very flashy. Number twenty two with the ball, get double team, fantastic, and then number twenty one just lays it right in. Number three, and then, oh, he tried to dunk it, and he was rejected harshly. Number 11, sharpshooter, makes it, and he cuts the lead back down. And nice Euro step. The, the, the handle, the ball handling steals from both teams are really, it's, it's nice, but just, 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 just a lot going on. It's a lot going on, both teams. The Pirates are playing phenomenally defensively. They have the same offensive, uh, same defensive strategy as the female team had early on today, but towards the end of the game. Yet, yet last year versus against this team, Park University. Shot 55% from field goal range, and then they, they had 22 bench points. So, you know, clearly they can score from anywhere. So it's the it's the intense and scary, fast, rapid speed pace they go at to have offenses off their game, and and that's what's. That's the game. But certainly, Linwood is the underdog in his game, nonetheless. One in five, 0 and two of conference, and Park is six and one, and they're ranked twentieth in NAI. But they do have a chance to have an upset, even with teammates. Who are out sick or not? I don't know. Not say who have a uh, due to injury. Fantastic effort, and then number two lays it in with all the muscle and body. Number three with the speed, lost ball control, bad pass. And it is out of bounds on the links when he dove for the ball. Fantastic. Number two is 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 the heart and soul of the team. I said this in the first half. I'm saying it about the second half. He has shown so much dedication in defense and offense that his other teammates need to realize it and match his dedication. And that is fantastic. And then he does not get to the down court fast enough, and he is rejected. Almost predictably, he went straight up with two defenders on him, and it is rejected until the Lindenwood Links bench area. It's crazy. Number five, wide open shot, makes it. Now, if I see a pattern here where they need to just start getting to that. They need to start getting their shooters open and just making the shots because they can make those shots every time. Miscommunication between number four and number 22, but they shake their hands and they get right back to the task at hand and get right back to business on defense. Number two is the inbound pass it. Great movement, great movement. A Hail Mary pass across the, the court. And great lay-in. He wasn't getting stopped by anybody. 
fantastic defense. And no, but he has had his back turned. He could not help his teammate when he went straight to the hole to lay that in. And we have a quick timeout. The Lynx are down by 11 points, but that that's nothing. They can always they can come back. They can knit that lead little by little by any means. They can do that. They have to actually they have plenty of time to do it. They have 15 minutes left in this half or in the game, I should say, to do this. But the passes are going to be really, really. And then that is beautiful. He rolls into the paint, and he throws up a prayer, and it comes down. <clears throat> this is a really – number two should have player of the game, regardless if this team wins or doesn't. He was everywhere on the court making plays, scoring the most points. And then fantastic block from number five. And then a great foul. Number 21 stops the offensive rhythm that the Lynch set went into. That's a smart move because if they would have got down the court and scored, that would have been great. And now there's, some, there's a little confusion a lot of, on the court against the Park University Pirates. They are getting frustrated here. They, they believe they should be blowing this team out, like I said before. But they're sadly, they're, 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 they're giving them tests. Even with a hurt roster, they are still competing, and that's the name of the game. And that is a beautiful-looking three, and that is a touch, but they rule it out on London with Lynx. But they – and these are different refs if uh, any parents are listening or anybody who is a fan of ours or anything. These are different refs. These refs aren't calling as much stuff as the female team – refs called. I will say that. Defense getting chance. He goes up and he gets fouled. But he does not get an and one, which is the important part. Gets the and one, gets one free bucket, and then that's three-point play. Make him earn those two from the line. Make him earn it. If he has the courage to go into the hole against tall defenders, he should Suffer the consequence. The Lynx lead by, I'm sorry, the Pirates lead by nine. The Lynx trail. And a miss here can really put them back in the circle of cut down his lead. And he does not, as I say that, he does not miss it. Park is just relentless on defense, like uh, super fast, quick hands. And the, 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 the coach is signaling. And then a player on the ground touches the ball as the ball is going out. In that situation, I just roll out the way to get the ball back, but they have another opportunity to score. The coach is frustrated right now. Number 21 is not having a great uh, time in the last two minutes. He has been complaining and they, they, they really got him off his rhythm. Number 21 scores a quick three. Number two has the ball. Ankle breaker on 3,000. He passed his teammate number 24. Loses the ball on the way up. Number two has to meet him there. 
and he meets him at the top of the backboard to deny him the ball, which he did, but it resulted in a foul. Great effort, like I said, from number two. He is the player of the game in my books. What a play. What a play. But unfortunately, he does go for two. They lead by 15 now, the Pirates. And he misses the second one. Not there. Dribble behind the back. Flashy. Cuts in. Passes back out. Can't seem to penetrate the paint whatsoever. Number 11 with the ball. A pick and roll or a screen would be fantastic as of right now. And then that is out on the Pirates. And they, they will return the ball back to the Lindenwood Lynx. Yeah, the, the the Pirates had a great championship run last year. They they their last game was in the AMC Championship round against Central Baptist, and they lost seventy one or sixty three to seventy one on March 9, 2019. So this year, so a lot of players, a lot of returners from that same roster is here tonight, and they really want to take first place at the AMC Championships this year, and they want to beat Central Baptist. Yeah, Blue Simon had 14 points, and he is here tonight. But Zach Rutland, who was first team AMC, is not here tonight, who was who, who was probably their leading scorer in franchise history with over 1,000 points. So, you know, they have some really seasoned players on this team, nonetheless. Number two with his quick speed, he and, and the pick and rolls are just slowly cutting into the paint, in the paint. Now it's one, now it is in. Fantastic spin move to get into the, to, to, just to get in. Number five has been driving the ball the entire time. He, his legs look tired out there, but he, he is still going strong. Three, and it's not in. It's five on five. Three from number four. It is air balled. Caught nothing but air. And that is a dunk. From number zero for the Lindenwood Lynx. Through an Aaron Rodgers Hail Mary pass. Straight to number zero. And he solidifies it with a dunk. And they try to get one their own. But with the Ali Oopman style. And did not get it. And that is a travel. The refs saw it. So did I. And so did everybody in this gym. Fantastic effort, fantastic play, fantastic dunk. Smart play. Defensively, they might need to use this as their, as a weapon. They need to use their defense against them when they play <clears throat> full court. If you're going to play full court press, you need to figure out how to see the holes in it. But this team is so well conditioned that I don't think they're going to get tired by the time this game is over. And then that 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 was just that was a very ferocious block. And then uh, number eleven jumped sky high, and that is a beautiful finger roll, fake pass, two on one, fast break action right there. It is forty six to fifty nine, and the Lynx are still fighting strong. The chance of defense. Fantastic defense from both ends now. Oh, and then it was miscommunication. And he throws the ball back into the other player's body to result of not, you know, 
get up a turnover, which is very, very smart. Class of street ball rules, that's before. Number two is coming back in. And that is, that is, that was the cleanest three and the most contested three of all night. And it went in clean as Don Soap. Number two has the ball. Pick and roll action would be great right now. Great screen, great shot. Even better setup, but could not execute on the shot, but it's all right. Fantastic tuck and roll into the hole. That way he couldn't get blocked on the way coming up. That's a classic move. You tuck that ball, you move in with your body, and then you come up on the other side under their arm. That way they can't block it, and if they do block it, you're going to get a foul because they're going to hit your face. Fantastic, fantastic. Nice screen for number two. That, that was that was the that was the, the quickness. The quickness of that steal attempt was inhuman. Right here, right over the top, number zero goes in the hole. Baby hook doesn't get up, get, get the ball back. Number twelve, number two is wide open, too high, and that's a nice three. Fantastic play. Number four tries to get a jab step, does not get it. Passing it out to his teammate. Number 23, fantastic. Too many flashy passes is being their downfall. And should have been a foul, but hands are straight up, so indicating that there was nothing intentional. So no foul was, no foul was called. Inside pass, and it, that is a blocking foul. Fantastic effort, though, from number two the heart and soul of this offense and defense for the Lynx. Thing number two is in some foul trouble right now. I think that was his fifth foul. I'm not sure. I think they're going to take, yeah, they're, they're, they're taking him out. I think that was uh, his fifth foul. Well, that's, that's, that's the result when you play uh, very tough defense. And that's the result you play. That's a, the that's a result. Number 10 for the Pirates. His second shot, or first shot, I'm sorry. Scores 49 to 65. And there we go. And it, and it goes back to the Pirates. So a lot of speed, a lot of power, a lot of muscle. It's, it's, it's really hard for them to really keep up with what's going on especially with the same rotation of guys that they have. There's been a couple players on the Lynx roster that has not been able to play yet, and that was a fantastic no-look pass, but his teammate was not there to receive it, and that's going to be a turnover under his name and against the Pirates. We 
brings the court down, number 11. Straight pass. The ball hits Pirate in the head. Number five. To number one. Has right back to number five. A three, and it goes down once again. Number five has a has triplet of threes. Nine points tonight off of three threes. This just fantastic. Three to the second power. And if they only get him more open looks would be the, the, the best thing possible. Fantastic mid-range shot. Does not go good. Tips it out. Park retains it. They're running full speed. Back behind the back. Jamal Crawford, ankle breaker, number five. 21 with the. And then number 14 was ready to take off. Number 21 is going for the ball. Doesn't get it. Defensively enchanted. Fantastic body control. Tip in from Mr. Blue Johnson. The, the AMC Championship third star from last year's championship run. Oh, 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 a lot of handles. And that is out on the Park University Pirates. Frustrations are frustrations on both sides are, are starting to brew. They're just like, it's you gotta be ready. It's like it's it's fast movement, fast action. And it's everybody on each team, everybody on the Pirates bench have enormous speed and great reflexes. And try to tip back out, out of bounds, number zero. Uh, number four, that's a three, and it is in and out. Pass number 24. And that is a three from number 11, and that is in and out. Re get offensive rebound, reverse layup, and he scores the difficult basket on the tall defender right underneath the rim. Great hand control. That's hard to spin the ball in that direction, especially under right underneath the rim. It's just it's hard. It's really hard to do. Fantastic defense, but he gets the ball right back. Offensive rebounds is a problem, or defense rebounds is a problem for the Lynx tonight. They cannot seem to get the rebounds after a block or a missed shot, but they have so much height that the Pirates just get the rebound. <laughs> Kickball violation, maybe? He has so much height and so much athleticism on the Park University Pirates team that they just can't give up the ball. It's every time they shoot, they get the ball right back in their hands and they just put it right back up. That's a problem that they're having right now. Offensive rebounds was going to be a factor this game. It's going to be a huge factor this game. Last time they played this team, they only had three offensive rebounds and 26 defensive rebounds. Now it's the other way around. Now you can get the defensive rebounds, but you're not getting the you know, you're not getting the offensive rebounds, but you're not getting the defensive rebounds, which is the problem, especially for all these misses. He dribbles the ball by himself, and he lays in. That's an in one. Number five is showing his true colors with all this athleticism and explosiveness and this courage while number two is out.
And that is a high arcing shot, which was looked premeditated. And that is right late in by number zero, who had the difficult rebound. Three ball, falls down. And that is going towards the links as the Pirates knocks it out of bounds. A three ball can cut the deficit to 10. Number three is, is, is reaching heavily, trying to provoke. And that is another. Three from number 14. This is fantastic. He has nine points. Defense, offense is not their problem. I think it's defensively. They just, the problem, that's, that's what they got to If they can stop the Pirates' offensive flow for maybe two drives and they can keep scoring like this, they can get right back into this game. They have about four minutes left. Three, three minutes, 54 seconds, but four minutes if you want to just round that up. They have four minutes to cut 10-point deficit and then try to tie this game up or possibly take the lead. So much-needed timeout for the Pirates. And we're going to see what Coach writes up. He's with his team right now. He's, he's kneeled down. He's trying to get get their spears back together. Like, hey, okay, let's let's do this. And and, and over there, the Lynx's is, is huddle, the coach is like, hey, you know, I coached the girls' team. This is the same coach from the girls' team. He's like, hey, I, I coached the girls' team. I saw their offensive and defensive uh, struggles, and guess what? We got to get things together wrapped up. We got to make smart plays and smart passes. And we have to keep moving the ball because if you stop moving the ball, this pressure, full-court pressure that they are putting on the links is, is breaking them down if they wait too long. And that's what's getting them tired. It's that they have to move faster than their opponent. And that's really hard to do. Number three, one inbounds ball. Number three. Now, number 21 by himself should be doubled because he is very strong in the paint. And then he is fouled. And they are not yet in the bonus. Defensively, number three is, is just uh, uh, wreaking havoc. It's hard to make plays. Now, that was a beautiful pass. Uh, number four snatches it, snatches it down, two on one. And that is a fantastic lay in. And number 21 is, is, is running down the court, trying to stop that the pass. And it's another three. And ah, same team. Shoots the ball, misses it. Zero has the ball. Number 24 was wide open, decides to pass the shot for a better shot. And it goes soaring out of bounds. It will be the Linda with Link's ball. Great screen, great screen, cut the middle, right back out. That is a beautiful play, but it falls a little bit short, just a tad bit further, and it would have been right in. Hand in the face, almost made it, but it just rolled out just a little bit, just a little bit. Number 11. Great power move. Great hook shot from number 14. And we have another timeout. 
got two minutes left on the clock. Two minutes and six seconds left on the clock. The Lynx are down by ten points. I don't know what they're going to do to somehow fight back in or cut the deficit. At this point, you know, do or die in a, in a, in a sense. Beat them at their own game. They could probably try to do that because the Pirates are looking really good right now. If they keep up what they're doing, they, they can just play keep away for two minutes and that's that. Be better if um, they play some full court defense, full court press if the Lynx did that to the, to the Pirates and see how they would react to that. It could backfire, but at this point, you have two minutes left, and you're in a 10-point deficit. The worst that can happen is you lose by more points. All right, both teams are coming back onto the court. The coach's blood pressure seems to be down. Number 11, single 16, so hey, let's get ready to go. And this is a full court defense like I was talking about. Pick and roll, he's trying to keep up. Number two, four, cannot, get, cannot keep up with number three. Number zero is with number four. Lots, lots of 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 man on man defense right now. And there's a this is a frustration on the bench and on the court. And number three will shoot free throws for the thought I was committed. We have another timeout. The Lynx have one timeout left versus Pirates three. While we have a little time, I will mention that we are going to be back here on December 7th, Saturday at 3 o'clock against William Wood University. The Owls. Yeah, we, we have a, a stream, a string of home games for the men's team that I know of. We have the 12th or the 7th of December, the 12th of December, and some other dates maybe. But those are the two home games that are scheduled for Lynx Arena. Last week for classes for Lindenwood University, Belleville. Before finals week starts next week. Last fish day is the 13th. Number 11. Fantastic effort, number 11, to chase down number, thir number 3, but does not do it successfully. Number 4 with the lay-in. And this should be it. This, this was a fantastic game we guys had today. Two teams showed up, played their heart out. Fantastic defense, fantastic conditioning from both teams. This is the speed of this, – this is this, – I don't know. This has to be the speed of some NBA players in here because – so so many steals and turnovers and and running back and forth, just so much movement on this court today that you just got to think to yourself, this is some some NBA caliber speed. Go, 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 go. 
A floater airballs it, which wouldn't be an airball because your teammate caught it, so that would be assist. It is 67 to 78. And that is a foul. Pirates have three of their own players in the backcourt ready for a fast break if miss. Too strong on that pass. Three on three. Fantastic defense, and that's a foul. The Leafs have nine fouls at this point. One timeout left. The Pirates have four fouls and two timeouts left. The score is 67 to 80. Almost a shocking resemblance to their last meeting, which was 64 to 84. But nonetheless, this is great. De it was great defense and great offensive scenarios and it's is a team ladies and gentlemen with a a hurt squad there's just a few hurt players that usually start that aren't starting today so to think you, the roles will be reversed and that is ah, nice lay in got 15 seconds fantastic Seven seconds left on the clock. Now, the only reason I would think they would be following is to maybe score more points and cut the deficit under 10 points to maybe get better rankings time to end of the year. That's that's my only guess. They would probably try to look better on paper. That way, when rankings go out for the AMC conference, they'll be seated a little bit higher. That's my only guess. That's a nasty putback to end it out. 71 to 82 is the score. Thank you, everybody who listened in. This is LBTV. This is Lynx Arena, Spectrum 989, and this is Corinthian Neighbors. Thank you, and good night.